We're on. Okay, we're on. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Pay attention. I'm talking. <laughs> Sorry, power trip. Um, so if you haven't noticed, I'm all alone. Everybody left me this morning. Uh, the good news is it rained. So we thank God for that. Amen. You uh, may or may not thank God that I'm up here alone. We'll see how it goes. Lay down your hurt, lay down your 
trying to Google stuff and trying to do things. And then so they're just different things we're trying to do and just trying to figure anything out. And we finally, one of the guys was down underneath and he was messing with a little throttle sensor and stuff. And while he was under there laying on his back, the throttle popped him in the head and he come loose and it's worked ever since. So I just think he got, he had a hard head. But, but you know, I sit there and, and I look at all these things and you know, we're so blessed in so many different ways. And I think it's important. I think that that is one of the biggest acts of worship is whenever you can just tell somebody else about how God, how good God is to you. You know, because we all face trials and things of many kinds, but, you know, God's good. And, you know, and he promised us that he's never going to leave us or forsake us, that he'd be there with us, even when we were messing up, that he would be there with us to show us how to get out, to how to overcome. So one of the things that I've seen with Rob, I'll come back and I've listened to his deal actually a couple of different times now. And a couple of things that I, I took from that, from what Rob was sharing was, the importance of relationship, and you know, first of all, with our Heavenly Father, but then with other people as well, and how important people are to us. And you know, and, and, and uh, people that uh, are there to uh, build you up, you know, and because we, again, we all face trials of many kinds, and we need people in our lives. But then he talked a little bit about some things when he was baptized. And, in, a, 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 in an act of obedience uh, to the Father and the part of the calling that uh, was on his life. And then, you know, and, and that, that act of obedience, even through now tithing and stuff and, and doing things, you know, I see that, you know, and, and uh, the sharing, the sharing with other people is uh, one of the things that I really got out of that about, you know, having employees and people around us, that circle of influence that we have you know, to speak life into the people around us and just to, and just outright just helping other people. And you know what, that, that's what God's called us to do. He's called us to, to be an influence in an impure world. And so that's a lot of what I was getting out of what uh, he was sharing there. And so I, it blessed me big time to do it. So Rob, thanks again. Now I want to ask you something else. I know that there's several that are gone on a, the walk to Emmaus Hill this weekend. And so I want to know something. If, if anybody got a praise report, you got something to be thankful for? Rain. 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 And rain. And rain. I love it. I love it. I'm not sure how much we got getting different reports around, but you know what? It looked like it was going to not hit Canadian. But then. I know through, I think the power of prayer. Amen. And I believe that that's, uh, we see some things because it went to building and it kept building and it kept building and I love it. We, it's a much needed rain. And so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thankful for the physical rain, but today we get together together and to be in the spiritual rain as well. And so I'm, I'm so thankful to be here to share some of these things. But is there anything else you can think of you need to be thankful for that happened this week, maybe? Okay. Everything. Yeah, that's so true. You know, I know that there were some decisions made in our Supreme Court this week that uh, actually took something and to me, what I've seen happen, I mean, I hear people argue about whatever they want to argue or whatever, but what I saw was a constitutional decision that was made to take a law, a couple of different laws, and to put it back to where it is by the people and for the people. Amen. And that's what God ordained. And so, and I, so I'm very thankful for that in that manner. And so uh, there's a lot I can say about some of that, but you know, I'm not here to be a political judge or anything, but I am here to speak truth. And that's what I want to do today. So I'm going to turn with you, turn to uh, the book of Proverbs here for just a moment and uh, start off with this. And this is coming out of the Passion Translation Bible that I'm going to share with you here. I'm going to share with you about 
or I think seven different verses right here that I want to share with you out of Proverbs. Now, when you hear the word Proverbs, what do you think of? Many times we think of just, it's a wise saying. That's a, a, a saying that comes from the wise. But whenever you look at that word uh, uh, proverb, it actually has a much deeper meaning than that. A proverb it means the rule to reign and to reign in power or to take dominion. That caught my attention because the Lord's been showing me in a, in a the book of Genesis about from the very beginning God created mankind to have dominion on this earth to, to reign and to rule and it said take dominion you know it was given to us and we gave it away through through the fall of mankind so I, and I don't go into a bunch of that right now but I want to take this proverb and if you need to be built up in your life I strongly encourage you to, you can Google this or you can do however you want. You can get the Passion Translation on your uh, computer, laptop, whatever. You can get it there. Or, or I finally went and bought one because I've looked a lot of these things up all the time. And so this Proverbs, when it starts off, it says, Wisdom from above. And you know what? That's what I need. I need wisdom from above. So here's this, here's this Proverbs, starting chapter 1. It says, here are the kingdom revelations, words to live by. That's got my attention already. Words to live by and words of wisdom given to empower you to reign in life. It says, written as a proverb as the Israel's King Solomon, David's son, it says, within these sayings, will be found the revelations of wisdom and the impartation of spiritual understanding. You want to understand the word? He's telling us how to get it right here. Get in this word and let the Holy Spirit be your teacher. And he goes on and says, use them as keys to unlock the treasures of true knowledge. Those who, those who cling to these words will receive discipline, to demonstrate wisdom. I love that. To demonstrate wisdom. And it says in every, in every relationship. And to choose what is right and just and fair. These proverbs will give you great skill to teach the immature and make them wise. God's called you to do this. He's called me to do this. He goes on and says, uh, the immature and to make them wise, it says, to give youth the understanding of their design and destiny. What are we speaking to our kids? You know, that it's very important that you recognize it. You know what, it says that, uh, that we can understand our design. First of all, if you have a design, you need to know that you had a designer. And that is the God of all creation. And you know, and, and he's the one that gives you destiny. He's the one that gives you purpose. He's the one that uh, directs your steps if you'll allow him to. And it goes on, it says, for the wise, <clears throat> for the wise, these proverbs will make you even wiser. And for those with discernment, you will be able to adequate to acquire brilliant strategies for leadership. Guess what? God created you to be the head, not the tail in your life. You know, we're, 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 again, we're created to have dominion in every aspect of our lives, to be in control. And it goes, goes on and says, these kingdom revelations will break open your understanding and to unveil the deeper meaning of parables Poetic riddles and how we say this epi, epigram epigrams and it says now what is an epigram? Is it a cracker? <laughs> no. <laughs> epigram. You know, epigram is actually a means to it's, it's a remark expressing an idea 
in clever and amusing ways. And that's what you'll see a lot in the Proverbs about how things are worded to bring out a, a purpose and an understanding. And so where do you get the idea to express in your life? Where did, that's very important. We'll look at that a little bit later, but it goes, goes on and says, and to unveil the, the words of the Egmas of the wife. Did I say that right? Enigmas. there you go. You know what, I practiced that stuff earlier too. you, that's what's bad. <laughs> it says, we cross the threshold of the true knowledge when we live in obedient devotion to God. I love that. God tells us how to be victorious in a very part of the, of the proverb, but throughout the entire word. And so I know that these are things that are vitally important that I wanted to share with you. But I want to ask you a question now. What do you believe is the first thing that God ever gave mankind? I go back into the book of Genesis again, and I'm not going to stay into this, but in the very beginning in verse 26, 126, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image and in our likeness, and let them rule. Let them have dominion. And so what was the first thing that I believe God gave us was an image. And you know what? I got to thinking about that this past week and about what kind of image do I portray in this world? In my business deals or in uh, whatever, just casually needing people. What kind of an image am I portraying to people? And you know, when I think of that word image, it, it also means likeness, as it says there. But that word image, it talks about it is a, the natural or the nature or the characteristics of God. It's what he gave you first. And then you get to thinking, so what does that look like? Well, it looks like love because God is love. It is righteous. It is holy. He said it was very good when he created mankind. And it goes on and says that he created us spirit, soul, and body in his image. And so I know that that's where I'm going to find completeness in life. And you know, and he, that's how he created mankind. And he says it is very good. And then you go over into the ch second chapter of Genesis there over about verse 8 and it says that now the Lord God had planted the garden in the east in Eden. This is a key word. East in Eden. And there he put, key word, he put the man he had formed. He put him there. He gave him a position. He, re, he positioned him in the garden in what he had formed. And he said, and the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden, there were the tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And you know the rest of the story about how he told mankind, do not be partakers of the tree of good and evil. You can have anything else, but don't do that. Because from that, you're going to find a different influence. You're going to find a different idea. And that's exactly what Satan did in uh, the serpent in the fall of man over there in chapter 3. We can see that. And I'm not going to go into that again all today, but I know that the word Eden, first of all, stuck out to me because God created man to live in Eden. What happened, we, we, again, we go into a lot of that, but Eden, what does it mean? What does the word Eden mean? Again, Eden, it talks about a place of pleasure. A place of pleasure. It talks of paradise. It means to be in the presence of God. You know, it, the, the word very plain, it tells us here in the scriptures too, it says that God created this garden, this Eden, for mankind to live there to where the Father, the God the Father could walk with him in the cool of the day, to walk and talk with God. And we can see that that was God's initial plan for us 
in our lives that uh, that's what he was going to do because what was God doing? God was establishing his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That's where that first initiated and came into play. But we can see that that was stolen from mankind through deception. And I don't want to be deceived in this life. Many times there's a lot of things that try to deceive us. You know, I can tell you it's, it's going to be an enemy. And I'm going to throw this out there again and then I'm going to move away from it again. But the Supreme Court decisions that were made, I believe, were answers to prayer. Years of prayer. And I, I believe that that's one of the things that when you pray and you're not seeing the answer, you need to keep on praying. You need to keep speaking the word of God in those situations. And so, but I can also tell you that whenever you see decisions like this made, whenever you uh, see that, there's great opposition will come against you as well. And we can see that that's happening now. But you know what? That happens in my individual life as well. Whenever I do things that I know it's the Lord's telling me to do something, there's going to be an enemy that wants to come screaming to try to bring deception into my life. Deception doesn't come from God and it doesn't belong to you. Period. So, in saying all that, we can uh, uh, we can see how important it is of who you hang out with. Of where you get your influence from. It, we can see how important it is to know who is influencing you. And so, I know there's been a lot of times in my life that I allowed the world to be my biggest influence over the Word of God. And I'm learning more as I go. I got on the job training when I said yes to Jesus. And you know what? He's still going to keep speaking into my life if I will get into His presence. He's going to be there. He's going to be there to speak to me and to give me what I need to overcome whatever there is in my life. And it's if uh, when I spend time with God, you know what I get? I get God ideas. And that's what he's called us to do, is to live from his idea. That's that garden, that's that Eden that he, that he has created for us. And so I begin to think of, and, and I'll show you this in a minute, I don't get too far ahead of myself, but I think of uh, uh, being in his courts, being in his presence. And again, we'll look a little bit more of that as I go, but uh, the word plainly teaches us that Jesus came as a ransom for many. What does it mean? He came as a ransom. He came to buy us back. You're bought by the blood of the Lamb. When you said yes to Jesus, He put you in a special place. Now I'm going to throw this in. I wasn't going to do this part till at the end, but I feel like I need to now. When I said yes to Jesus, I can remember in my prayers asking the Holy Spirit to take up residence within my life. I begin to read the word and I begin to get things and it says Christ in you the hope of glory so I begin to recognize that I was repositioned in him and I needed reposition tremendously so the way that just a simple picture a word picture for me is I can see the father the God of all creation he's here and you know what he knew things were wrong in this world so he sent his son Jesus Christ and you know what? He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to, to bring redemption into our lives, to be redeemed. To, he was the ransom that had to be paid that we could have access back to him. But he also sent the Holy Spirit to be our teacher, to be the one. So I see that like this, this triangle. And whenever I recognize that when I said yes to Jesus, he put me right in the heart of it between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I just see this big triangle with me, or with you, right in the heart of who God is. 
giving you back that nature that you were created to have, giving you back a new position to, that you could reign and rule from, that you could have dominion in. And so the, uh, <clears throat> I hope that makes a little bit of sense there, but there, there's so much of this. And over in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 9 and verse 15, it says, for this reason, it says, Christ, Christ is the mediator of a new covenant. That those who are called may receive the promise eternal and in, eternal inheritance. It says, now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins, sins committed under the first covenant. This was very important scripture to me as I, I began to read that because what, what is sin? Sin is you miss the mark. It's simply what it means. Sin means miss the mark. Let me ask you this. Have you ever missed the mark? Oh, yeah. Every one of us have. In fact, the word said all of sin miss the mark and fall short of the glory of God. But when he repositions you, he repositions you back in his glory. That's good news. In fact, Jesus said, Father, I have given them the glory that you have given me. It goes on, and if that miss the mark, you know, it means, uh, if I miss the mark, it means I have the wrong influence directing my path. It means there, there, I've got an influence that did not come from God's idea. And you can find that in many different forms and fashions. You can find it through uh, other men's understanding. But you know what? I'm not to live according to man's understanding. I'm called to live according to God's understanding that he shared with us. As we read in Proverbs there a while ago, it, when you receive his wisdom and knowledge, you will receive his understanding as well. God's idea. And so, again, uh, Galatians, the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13, it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. He redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing, blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Jesus Christ so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. The promise of the Holy Spirit. Remember when Jesus ascended into heaven, he said that he was going to ask the Father to give you another comforter. Counselor, and that is the Holy Spirit. And I can tell you this you cannot do life without the Holy Spirit in your life. You've got to have him. You've got to have him. Now, it come <clears throat> to me, it's the Holy Spirit that breaks everything different to where you're not walking in religion, you're walking in a relationship with Jesus Christ when the Holy Spirit takes up residence within your life. And so this word redeem, what does it mean? It means to own again. It simply just means to own again. So if you were bought by the blood of the Lamb, what now is your testimony? My testimony should not be, you know what, it just gets worse and worse. You know what, I just... I just can't ever, I just can't ever win. That's not from the Lord. That's not God's idea. He called, He created you to be dominant. And so we've got to recognize uh, our, our speech and stuff that we, that we say, our words that we say, because I'm going to assume that a lot of you, just like me, were taught a lot of bad things along the way. To look at ourselves like we're not good enough. I can't do that. 
When Jesus said, oh, you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. It is the joy of the Lord that gives you strength. And so, you know what? Instead of gloom and doom, I used to, I grew up watching Hee Haw all my life. And I mean, I think, sit back, and I, I used to love the, the, the girls singing and stuff, and, you know, gloom, despair, and agony on me, or all them deals. You know, and, and you know what? I thought those were catchy tunes. But that's not from the Word. And so I had to change some of the way that I thought into my life. And so, anyway, uh, my testimony should be about God's idea in my life. It should be about God's idea for you in your life. It should be about who He says I am. You know, we sing songs like that. I am who he says I am. But then we walk out and we go, oh man, I don't know. I mean, you know, we, we, we take on attitudes, nature, that we don't need to take on. And so, am I the only one? Okay, good. Well, let's quit. <laughs> and so, you know, there's many times that people think that it's it's hard to share what God's speaking to you in your life. And you know, and I know that uh, uh, when you do share what God shared with you, it blesses you. You will be blessed whenever you give away what God gives you. I guarantee that. He, he guaranteed that. And so I know that there's a lot of times, and it, it was uh, hard for me when I first got saved to, to share with anybody. But the very first thing that they told me to do was just as soon as I accepted Christ that day, he said, before the sun goes down, he says, you need to go tell somebody what you did today. And I did. I only shared with somebody else that I accepted Jesus Christ and asked the Holy Spirit to take up residence within my life. And that's where I heard some great words of wisdom from one of the guys who used to rodeo with my dad. And he looked at me and he said, Donald, you can't do life without it. And how true that is. I tried to do life without God in my life. Oh, I knew he was out there. But I didn't recognize that he wanted to position me in him. Christ in me, the hope of glory. So they began to, to change things. And I know I'm trying to run through some of this pretty quick. But uh, let me say this. It took me a while to get to where I could speak or to do anything. I was so fearful of it. I still stumble all over myself at times, but you know what? I know that when God's speaking to me and sharing me something, now I get to sitting up here talking and I get thoughts coming from everywhere that I want to share, but I can't do it all at one time. So I've got to train myself to sort of stick to my notes a little bit to make the points that I know that he really needs me to make. And so I know that the, in that, I know that it's, it's not hard for me to share anymore. But I can tell you that at a the time there was, and it was, I was asked, sort of like Rob said the other day, he said, you know, not last me three times. And I finally got him in a corner where he couldn't get out. But, but as the thing is, is that Rob shared, and I know it blessed him and it blessed many others. So when you share what God's sharing with you, it's going to bless you and it's going to bless others. That's a guarantee. But many times we want to say, well, I'm not as good as, well, I tell you what, I ain't no Billy Graham. I didn't have to tell you that either, did I? <laughs> but I, I am who God created me to be. And I'm growing in that, and so I'm going to share from that point of view. I'm going to share from where I'm at, from where he positioned me. I'll just say it like this. God is not looking for secret agent men. He doesn't want people to keep their mouth shut. He wants people to speak, to tell. And, you know, he, he's not looking for these secret agent men. He, he wants his children to be filled with the Holy Spirit and become a witness. First of all, in your house, in your own home, to be that witness 
And you know what? Sometimes that's hard. Sometimes family can be hard because they know all your mistakes that you've done. And that's where a lot of times people want to judge you from what you've done and not from what Jesus has done. And you know what? I've had to learn to look at myself at that point to do that. So I, I want to be the witness that he ordained me to be from the very beginning. Now there's a scriptures, and I know you know a lot of these scriptures that uh, I'm going to share with you right quick. But in Psalms 100, Psalms 100, I'm just going to use verse 4 here, and not the entire Psalms here, but verse 4 it says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Now what we do whenever we first come in here, we, we begin to to worship, to celebrate. We begin to, uh, I, and I ask you, I said, well, what do you have to be thankful for? Well, you say, everything. And you know what we do? It's so true. We've got so much to be thankful for. And we need to focus on those things. Because it says to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. His courts with praise. It's a key word I'm going to bring out. And it says, give thanks to him and praise him. His name. Praise His name. How do I praise the Lord? I share what He shared with me. That's how we do it. It's that simple. And so I know it's so much we can do, but the word courts is a word that stuck out to me here. And I begin to look into some of it. And that word courts, what does it mean? It means the presence of the King. King David wrote these scriptures here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so what does it mean? King David, he knew how the court system or how the courts work in, in a kingdom. And you know what? And that's what Jesus came in to usher in the kingdom of God. Now, and they also called him what? The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so these courts, when you see this word courts, it's talking about the presence of the king or the presence of God. Now, what did mankind have in the, in the Garden of Eden? It was in the presence of God. So we see that type of court there because I'm putting out, because you're going to see many times, it talks about his courts, not just a court. His courts, his presence in different places. We've seen it in, first of all, in Eden. We're seeing it here now through some of this. and So just look at a couple other scriptures here. In Psalm 65, 65 verse 4, it says, Blessed are those you chose. Guess what? God chose you before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. You was chosen. And you may not like it, but you was chosen for such a time as this. It says, blessed are those who you chose and bring near to live in your courts. Or in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. We're filled with what? Good things. Guess what? God wants good things in your life. And we need to be willing to grab a hold of the good things that he has for us. Psalms 84. Psalms 84, verse 2. It starts off and says, My soul yearns even faints for the courts of the Lord. For the presence of the Lord. And it said, my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. They cry out for the living God. Look over at verse 10. And it says, better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. You know what? That's, that's not just a saying. It's a reality. Because if you never enter into the courts of God, you're not going to enter into the eternal salvation that he has for you. And it's better is one day in your courts and thousands elsewhere. 
I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Other influences. It's our choice that we make. And it's a choice that we make every day. If you look at, I'm going to back up in verse 5, it says, Blessed are those whose strength is in you. Where does strength come from? <coughs> the joy of the Lord. The presence of who he is and who he is in us. And it says, we have set their hearts on your pilgrimage. I want to walk your way, Lord. I want to do things from your ideas. It goes on and says, as they pass through the valley of Baca, that's a dangerous place to be. And it said, they make it a place of springs. In other words, you were created to be the influencer. You were created to influence dark places that you will walk through on the face of this earth. And it says, the autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Guess what? I know this may sound goofy to a lot of people, but I really believe that my life is getting gooder and gooder. That's my dialogue. I believe that the best is ahead of me, not behind me. I believe that God has more revelation and wisdom and understanding ahead of me than whatever I have been able to receive up to this time. He has more of his kingdom to be revealed through us in our lives. And it said, they go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion, it's always said. Now it goes, <clears throat> I want to do one more of those. Psalms 96. Psalms 96, verse 6. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Now, there's a whole lot of things we could go to right there because when you receive the Holy Spirit within your life, it says you became a what? Temple of the Holy Spirit. God wants His nature living and dwelling within you so it can overflow from you. And it says <clears throat> the strength and glory are in His sanctuary. It says, ascribe, ascribe to the Lord O family of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Come into his courts, his presence again. Bring an offering. You know, the word teaches us, that, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring a real brief in it. Rob brought it up last week. He talks about the tithe and the offering, we got it back there, we got it back here. It says, bring it in, bring it into the storehouse, the word teaches us. And then it says, then open up. You know, whenever they, I think back to the, the little lady with the mites, she gave everything she had out of her, out of just two small coins. But it was the condition of the heart. And that's what the word teaches us. Consider this in your heart and then give. Recognize him as king is what's going on there. That's what it's all about. I mean, so it's not a law. And, and, and again, I, that's not the gist of it. I want to be in his presence. And I want to sacrifice. I, you know, I, the best way that I can sacrifice is surrendering my thoughts and ideas unto his. Surrender my thoughts and live according to his thoughts. So he can train my thoughts to be his thoughts. And so that's what happens in the courts. That's what happens in, 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 in us as we surrender. So again, I'm going to take it back into the New Testament. And I'm going to go into the book of uh, Matthew 28. At verse 18, Jesus again, he says himself, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Guess what? It was bought back. 
bought back what man, Adam, give away in the beginning. Jesus bought it back. What was bought back? All authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go. Here's, here's our commission. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. What is a disciple? A disciple is a learner. It is a follower. In, a, in other words, if I'm going to follow, I need to follow God's ideas, God's thoughts, or I'm going to be following somebody else's. You know, you can be a disciple of Satan as well when you follow those ways. And you know, and that's a, God created us, we got to recognize it again as his children. He put us back into his courts, back into that Eden, if you will. And it goes on, it said, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with you right in the middle. And it says, because you can't give away something you don't have. And it says, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of age. What's with you? He is. And you know what? He never goes anywhere without his ideas. And so God's ideas are made very available to us because of Christ in us, the hope of glory. But we need to hunger for it. As the word said, we need to thank for it. We need to surrender to God's ideas and thoughts and ways. In other words, it's the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit in you is always going to be trying to remind you of everything that Jesus has said. He's going to be trying to direct your paths. And you surrender to that, and your life will look different. My life will look different. And that's something that, you know, it's not a one-time thing. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit daily, every day, every moment of every day. And you know what? I'm still a work in progress. I still have thoughts and ideas that I allow to redirect my path. You know, one of the things when we first got them over, what they call them, garments, the old GPS kind of deal. I remember that word, redirecting. You know what? I need a lot of redirecting in my life. And that's what the Holy Spirit does whenever we will surrender our ears to him, to let our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes see him and hear him for who he truly is. Now again, Jesus didn't die just to get you to heaven. But that's many times what is taught. But Jesus didn't die just to get you to heaven. Jesus didn't die just so that you could walk on the streets of gold. Jesus didn't die just to, so you could sit on a cloud and play a little harp. Jesus didn't die just so you could go get in your little mansion and sit in the corner of glory land. Jesus died that you could be his witness on earth as it is in heaven. Man, there's my destiny. That's the destiny that we're supposed to be teaching our children. And those are things that, you know, we got to get a hold of ourselves. But we need people to remind each other of the purpose that God has for each and every one of us. You are a good witness in Him. When I live according to His ways. So, you're called to influence this world back to God as he establishes his kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. You know, it is God's nature in you is to be manifested on this earth. How many times do we make the comments that we've been trained to do of, man, God, just, just come on back and wipe all this out and get us out of here. I want to hurry to get hit to rapture. I want to I want to hurry and get off this earth. 
when that's not God's plan and idea for your life, your plan and your idea is for his kingdom to come through you and be manifested on this earth. Matthew 25, I'll put with the scripture. Matthew 25, verse 34. Start here, it says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Who's the king? God of all creation. Jesus, it says down. And it says, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom. The kingdom. Scripture says, Fear not, little flock, for it blesses the father to give you what? The kingdom. He wants to give it to you while you're on this earth so that you can give it and expand it on the face of this earth. And it said, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. That's back in the garden. We can see, and it says, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was sitting thinking uh, when I was reading this yesterday, I began to think back about in, in Oklahoma City or some of these different places, big cities you go through, Amarillo, I'm seeing it more and more all the time, a lot of homeless people, a lot of people that are in dire need. And that's not the king's idea. But he wants us to expand that kingdom, however we're going to have to do it. Here he said, these are words of Jesus. I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. What is your testimony? This is the testimony that is an expression of God's idea of what we're called to do. It goes on and says, <clears throat> Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry or feed you or thirsty or give you something to drink? When did we see you as a stranger and invite you in or needed clothes and clothed you? When did you see or when did we see you sick and in prison and go and visit you. Then the king will reply, I tell you the truth. You know what Jesus does? He always tells the truth. It's a good place to get our wisdom from. I tell you the truth. Whatever you did for the least of one of these brothers of mine, you did for me. There's a lot of different ways that we can express what God pours into us in our lives. But it will always be an outreach that builds people up. But we live in a world that likes to see the trouble and complain about it. And that's not what God called us to do. He called us to reach into some uncomfortable places and speak life in those uncomfortable places. Establish his kingdom in those uncomfortable places. Because if it's uncomfortable to me, I've got to think, am I saying what Jesus did on the cross wasn't good enough? But what in reality it means I have to die to myself, to my own thoughts, my own ideas, my own comfort. Because Jesus was willing to lay down his life for a friend. That's you and I. And he asked us to surrender our thoughts and our ideas unto his and go forward. Everything that God created was created to go forward. I like that. That 
tells me that there's more of the kingdom of God for me to explore. He's got more for me in my life. Now again, I'm, I'm going to bring this back out one more time and I'll be done. We have the God of all creation that is full of love and he loves you so much. He knows your shortcomings. He knows all the things that we've done wrong in our lives. There's nothing that catches him by surprise. But he loves you so much he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to lay down his life, to buy us back, to redeem us from the curse of the law, to redeem us from the influences that don't come from him. But not just to redeem us, but to empower us when he gives us the Holy Spirit to live within our lives. And as the Holy Spirit, it says, you will receive power and you will become my witnesses. And that's why he positioned us right in the center, right where he needs us to be. That's in his court. That's in his presence. And remember this, he promised he would never leave you and he would never forsake you. So guess what? You're carrying great power as his children right now and it's bigger than you can think or imagine. God has more for you in your life but he says take what I've given you and pour it out and then be filled again. Be filled again and again and again. It's a choice I make. I can be filled with the presence of the Holy Spirit, the presence of God all creation, the presence of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, or I can be filled with the patterns of this world. The patterns of this world bring death and destruction. The patterns of this world are actually being controlled by an enemy that does not want you to be victorious. But guess what? You are victorious in Jesus' name. Okay? Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, I want to thank you for your word. But Father, if I thank you for your word, I'm also thanking you for the way that you love us. That Father, that you loved us so much that you weren't willing to allow us to be out there by ourselves. That, that Lord, you not only give us your son, Jesus, you not only fill us with your spirit, but Father, you have placed us, Father, with your family in the court, the, the courts of the council of the wise. So, Father, I thank you that I can hear uh, other people and to go to them and we can dialogue about what your word teaches us. Not doing Bible studies, but doing na nature studies, to doing uh, allowing your nature to take up that residence within us, that Father, that we can see that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So Father, I know that there's there's people that are going through things. Father, I'm sitting here thinking now, I know that there's several people that are out there uh, not feeling well right now. There's sick people. And Father, I know that that's something that your son, Jesus Christ, comes to take care of. So, Father, I just speak life into those situations. You, you said your word is good medicine for the soul. So, Father, may your word continue to be spoken on those people that are not feeling well and that they can expect better things to come, your kingdom to come in their lives as it is in heaven. But, Father, also I know that there's a lot of people that are homeless across this country right now and countries abroad. And Father, I just want to, I just want to thank you that Father, that you give us the opportunities to to help in those areas, to speak life into those areas, to to clothe them as your word says, but to clothe them again with your nature and your character, just love them right where they're at. Because Father, I was the lost one when you found me. You knew where I was all along, but Father, I had no clue. But Father, I know that you're showing me a way, a new and improved way. And Lord, I just
just know that Lord that there's there's others that Lord that just they they don't know they don't know how to be still and listen and so Father I just want to pray for a, a spiritual hunger in the hearts of your children to draw closer to you that we don't live by what we've been taught in the past but we live by every word that you are speaking now into our life. Father, you said that we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that the truth from your mouth. So Father, I pray that our spiritual ears will open up to continue to hear what you have for us. Lord, again, we want to walk in the obedience of the life that you've ordained for each of us so that we can know the destiny that you have for us. Father, again, I don't know how to say it, except just simply to say, thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Take me up.